Good morning. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna tackle patio heaters. Um, this one is just one of those, you know, $100, $150 models. You can see them everywhere, BJ's, Home Depot, most places sell them. I have another one that's in the garage. It's a little bit of a newer model um, that works awesome. Um, however, this one has gotten quite temperamental over the years. And so I've gone through and I've done a little diagnosis on it. There's a couple things actually wrong with it. Um, so one of them was that the regulator went bad. So I'm gonna show you how to change out the regulator on this. And the other thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna bypass the thermocouple on this one because that has always been a huge pain point on this thing. Um, just ever since the second time I tried to use it. Um, so again, uh, we'll go through and walk through on how to do that. So first things first, you've got your regulator. This is just a five foot regulator hose. So you can get those on Amazon. They're like 15 bucks. Um, it's a standard propane regulator. And all you need is this is an 11 sixteenths. This is a three quarter. So that way you hold on here while you loosen this off. Once you break it real quick, just break it free. It can come off by hand and you can reach in here. There's enough space behind the panel here to get in there with, um, with your hands to screw it down. And then it drops right through. Now the hose here is actually strong enough that you can go ahead and feed it right back up and through and then just start to reattach it. So if you hold the bottom of the hose down here while you're reaching, it doesn't take that big of an arm span. Um, you can start to get this threaded on quick. And then again, three quarter, 11 sixteenths, and you tighten it back on. The next thing we're gonna do is talk about the thermocouple. You can have a bad tilt switch, which is right here. Um, and I've known people to bypass that either by just connecting these, uh, these wires together. Um, however, I like the idea of a tilt switch. So what I've done here is these were a little bit loose, um, or at least one of them was. So I went and you can see I put a new crimp connection on there. And now these are nice and tight on the tilt switch. So I don't have to worry about any uh, faults. This operates very similar to like your RIO switch, your reverse implement operation switch that you'll see on like a John Deere tractor um, or any other kind of uh, rider. That's the button you have to push before you can put it in reverse so the blades stay engaged. Um, I did bypass it on that, but for different reasons. But let's get into the next thing here, which is bypassing the thermocouple. All right, so now this next section might scare some people, and I'm sure there's gonna be, if people comment, uh, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's a safety thing. Why are you taking it out? If you're not stupid about it and you're smart and you're paying attention to these types of things, it's not gonna be an issue. Um, so again, propane's heavier than air. Yes, it sinks, but Removing the thermocouple is just what I'm gonna do here. It's gonna work for me. I could replace it and do all new valve stuff, but thermocouples to me are a headache on these things, so it's a bypass. So first things first, you can get yourself a pair of pliers to hook on to this little nut right here, this brass nut. This will come off, and then you can pop it out of the way. Boom, 13 millimeter. I did it on a... Uh, a deep socket so I could fit it over. This will pop off. It did on mine. I've had this for 10 years. Inside of here, you will find the thermocouple. I'll show you that right now. It'll be this little guy. And what you're gonna be staring at is this. And so the easiest way to get that out is you get a nice pair of pliers. You latch it onto this metal part and I'll show you what it looks like in here. And it will spin freely in there. It sits there just like that. It will spin freely. But what I've done is I did a little bit of twisting on it back and forth and pulled. It might take a couple of attempts because it'll slip off. There's not a lot of spots to grip it, but it does pull out pretty easily. Once you have this out, you will see it will actually have the spring over it as well as this little guy here will be over the top. So this all kind of connects together. The spring is compressed down and this guy is sitting right on top of the spring. So you got spring and the cap. This cap is tied onto the little ball here. It's just snapped on. And again, you hold on to this pair of pliers. You grab the cap right here. You can see where I've mangled mine. And you just twist and back and forth a little bit and pull and it pops off. Done. Now we reinstall. You just tuck that guy back in there. Put your cap back on. Get the ratchet and tighten that up. 
Again, 13 millimeter. I use the deep socket so I can get in there. There we go. Reattach. line. I might need two hands, but we'll see if we can get it. There we go. Perfect. I might need two hands for this, so let me pause the video. I'll come back. Again, get your pliers, and you just come on here and tighten this brass nut back on once it's in. using my good hand let's swap out let's go with the good hand and watch me be worse now that it's on camera there we go that's tight back in place all right we're back in the front left that open just in case for whatever reason something didn't go right However, tilt switch is still in place. Let me just come over here. Don't have to worry about the pilot anymore. You can go right and hit the gas. There we go. I think the only thing left for me to do is I'm just gonna go grab the igniter and just move that a little bit closer so that it's catching the flame. That's it, and there you go. You got heat. I don't know if you can even see a wavy lines coming out, but anyway, that's it. Fixed. Okay. You don't have to like, you don't have to subscribe. Again, this is just another one of my quick things. One of those items around the house has been bothering me and it actually happens every year um, because I really only use this once a year for the big Halloween party. Then I use the good one that I have in the garage for when I'm having beers with my buddies in the driveway or whatever, and it's cold out. Um, so this one kind of gets, gets put away in storage till then. So this is going to be awesome that it's fixed. I don't have to keep coming around to turn it back on and fight with it all night in order to just get it to work. So awesome. Save a little time, save a little money. Again, I did do the regulator valve, but that was shot and I knew that. And that was part of my diagnosis. So um, hope you learned something. Take care.